Continuous venovenous haemofiltration is the most commonly used type of renal replacement therapy in intensive care. Although the technology is complex, the technique is essentially simple. Blood is aspirated from a large bore central venous cannula and pumped into a haemofilter. This is a canister containing a high surface area hollow fibre semi-permeable membrane. Plasma water crosses the membrane under hydrostatic pressure in a process called ultrafiltration. Solutes with a molecular weight of less than 50,000 Daltons are dragged across the membrane by a process termed convection. These processes are discussed in more detail in our basic principles presentation. Typically, 1.5 to 2.5 litres per hour of ultrafiltrate is produced. The ultrafiltrate is essentially dilute urine. Unlike the kidney, no reabsorption takes place, so lost water and electrolytes are replaced with a balanced electrolyte solution in equal volume to the lost ultrafiltrate. In patients with fluid overload, less fluid is replaced than is lost as ultrafiltrate with a reduction in intravascular volume. The haemofilter is simply a large glomerulus. The semi-permeable membrane is a substitute for the highly permeable, high surface area glomerular capillaries. The filter itself is a canister containing a high surface area membrane of highly permeable or high flux hollow fibres. The pore size of the membrane is 50,000 Daltons, so electrolytes, urea and creatinine pass across freely while plasma proteins are retained. Hemofilter membranes absorb small molecules like cytokines and improvements in hemodynamics may be seen in patients with sepsis who start hemofiltration. The membrane's absorption capacity becomes saturated within hours, however, and this has not been shown to have a therapeutic benefit additional to replacement of renal function. A key prescription of CVVH is flow rate, which is the rate of ultrafiltrate production. Flow rates of 20 to 35 mils per kilo per hour, that is around 1.5 to 2.5 litres per hour, are typically prescribed. There's been a great deal of research interest in the potential benefits of higher flow rates to patients, but to date using high flow rates has not shown any benefit. A flow rate of 20 mils per kilo per hour should normally be used to start, although higher rates may be used if more rapid solute clearance is felt necessary. Higher flow rates are associated with greater expense as more replacement fluid is necessary. The composition of replacement fluid is covered in another short presentation. The replacement fluid is normally added volume for volume with lost ultrafiltrate. It can be infused before or after the haemofilter or a combination of the two. Pre-dilution replacement reduces blood viscosity, increases ultrafiltration rate and reduces the risk of clot formation in the filter canister. Solute clearance is reduced however due to haemodilution. In practice, a combination of pre- and post-filter replacement is normally used. Anticoagulation is essential to prevent clotting within the extracorporeal circuit for most patients. The aim is to anticoagulate the circuit rather than the patient although this can be difficult. Unfractionated heparin is normally used with APTT monitoring. Prostacycline or Flolan, an inhibitor of platelet aggreg aggregation, can be used as an alternative to heparin, but it is expensive and can cause vasodilatation. Citrate anticoagulation is commonly used in the USA, but rarely in the UK. Fractionated or low molecular weight heparin offers little additional benefit to unfractionated heparin and may be more difficult to monitor. 
Note that clock within the Venus access lumen triggers an access pressure alarm on the machine, while clot in the filter canister causes an increased transmembrane pressure alarm. Anticoagulation may not be necessary if clotting is impaired, as detailed in the slide. Dialysis is an alternative to CVVH. The differences in the techniques are illustrated here. CVVH is a convective process with loss of water due to ultrafiltration accompanied by convective loss of solutes. Dialysis involves movement of solutes by diffusion down a concentration gradient across a semi-permeable membrane. Most ICUs do not have the plumbing to allow use of intermittent hemodialysis. Although outcomes are no different between the techniques, continuous therapies are associated with less hemodynamic instability as fluid and solute shifts occur more gradually. If the costs of infrastructure are removed, intermittent hemodialysis is less expensive than CVVH as the cost of replacement fluid in CVVH are considerable. If high solute clearance is required, most hemofiltration machines can be used to provide continuous hemodiafiltration, or CVVHDF. Dialysate fluid is infused countercurrent to the direction of blood flow in the filter, and solute movement by diffusion is added to convective losses with ultrafiltration. My own observation is that solute clearance is rarely a problem with CVVH unless the filter is clotting frequently, and CVVHDF adds complexity and expense to the technique with no patient benefit.